Hey guys, so let's just get into it. If you've seen my video on asking tablature data questions, as well as my video on automating my personal finances and turning my finances into a data science project, what we're gonna do here is combine the two methods and create a robo accountant that we can ask our questions to and it will read our personal finance data and be able to give us an answer so this it's i think this is a pretty cool tool i'm really excited to build this out a little bit more so let's go ahead and get started first thing we'll need to do is install all the things we need for um, Pinecone and vectorizing our table data so that we can query it with our NLP model. So let's go ahead and install Pinecone, Sentence Transformers, and Torch. That'll take a good long while. And then we initiate all that good stuff. We set the retriever as our sentence transformer. Um, as such, using the Hugging Face Models Hub, that'll take another good long while. And then in order to read our table data, we're going to use Google Tapas. And we get that using more Hugging Face Model pipelines and whatnot. To set up Pinecone, you just need to go make an account and you import Pinecone. You'll need your API key. Another feature about Google Colab that I really like lately is you can set these as secret. So I can just hold all my API keys in this little key here and just call it this way. And then we initiate the Pinecone environment, passing through our key and calling the environment that we created when we set up the account. I called this index personal robo advisor, and then we're going to upload our pinecone to it. Um, I just left all this as default. Uh, the metric is cosine, dimension is 768. I don't know if that's like actually accurate for this use case, but it seemed to work when I did it. So um, I just left things as the default quick start. And then in the previous video, we created a a uh, function that would process the tables. That's because the table needs to be essentially a CSV that's joined together all in one, what looks like one giant list. Um, and everything is delineated by this uh, new line uh, string here. So once you do that, you'll have a process data frame and we need to then, we'll pass through our table, our personal finance table through this in order to get it ready to load up into Pinecone and have our model read it. So let's set up our personal finance. If you've seen that video, it's very similar. What we're gonna do is just call the Google Sheet, set all the right, um, you know, change the amounts to a float type, get the data, turn the data, into strings objects so that we can then pass it through this here and uh, all that good stuff as well. You can see the date types are all objects. That's important because uh, our data, our model can only read strings, right? Because it's a natural language processing model. So it can't read other data types. It can only read string objects. So need to make sure, even if it's a date or an amount, you need to make sure that you turn that into a string. Now, uh, you also do not want to have any missing values. If there's missing, you're going to get a lot of errors, and it's not going to be super intuitive as to why you are getting those errors. It's not like the stack trace tells you, hey, you have missing values here. We can't read it. So just make sure that it's string and that you have no missing values and the model should be able to um, read it and be able to at least give you some answer whether it's accurate or not is another issue but it should be able to pass through without any errors so this is what the data frame looks like i know we're zoomed in here pretty pretty far but if you've seen my last video this is just 
a few rows of my literal personal finance, right? We have my expenses, paycheck there, fee there, transfer another paycheck there. So yeah, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is um, process that table that I just showed you. Um, and we put that into uh, a list. Let's say you had multiple tables of personal finances that you wanted to do. Let's say you just grabbed a statement from each account and you had that in CSV form. You could throw that all in here, process the tables and be good to go. So uh, this basically uploads the process tables into Pinecone. Um, and you can see it was, um, there's lots of comments here. I didn't write this actually. I just directly took this from the Pinecone um, tutorial that they have to help you do this kind of thing. So yeah, this is just creating IDs ranging from zero to the total number in the data set. It's generating embeddings. Um, it's doing all the things necessary to actually read the table as it to vectorize it. And you'll see the vector count is one. That makes sense. If we had two tables pass through here, you, we would see two, three, we would see three, etc. So then we can finally query and this will set a query. What category type is a fee? The correct answer here is expense. And so what we're trying to see here is, will it even bring up the right table? Um, the score is it's it's like 50% confident that it's bringing up the right table, which is really weird because there's only one table in this instance. And that ID is zero, which is just, right, everything is indexed like a list. So if I uploaded like three tables, it would go zero, one, two, right? So I uploaded one table, so the first, table in the index is zero. Um, so it shouldn't, it should be pretty confident that it's bringing up the right table, but I don't know why it's, it's saying it's 50. Anyway, I, I, I digress. So this is just to make sure that we're bringing up, like if we had multiple tables, this is just a good way to show like, does it bring up the right table? And it did in this instance. So, um, one thing we can do is what we're doing here is then passing our table through our table reader pipeline, as well as our query. Uh, I just wrote truncation equals true. That helps truncate the table uh, a bit so that it just runs a little easier. Um, and you can see the answer is expense. It tells you where the coordinates are, two by three cells expense, right? So um, we're not interested in all of this information here. So one thing we can do is just set up a function that grabs the table, sets the ID, and then we can call get answer from table where we pass through our table ID as well as our query to get an answer. Um, and then we just have something like this where we pass through a query, we get the table, we set the answer, and then we just print query, you know, and then we should get this where we get the query what category type is fee, answer, expense. And um, I didn't run any of these cells. This is previously ran, so I wish I could give you a little bit more here, but that's basically the pipeline there where you, once you set it, once you get to here, you can just keep calling these two uh, functions here. We can basically just iterate a bunch of these types of cells where we set a query, we get the table and we get the answer and we can read what we got going on here. Um, cool. Yeah, like I said, this is pretty straightforward tutorial. It didn't take me too long to get done. The only thing that was kind of difficult was when I was trying to pass through my table in the pipeline and I was getting all these errors and it's because up here, uh, the tables just were not set correctly. So I, I do, if you wanna try this um, on your own data or with any data, just make sure that it's all string objects and that you don't have any missing values. That's my big takeaway from this project. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. I, I, I'll probably keep playing around with it to see if it can like aggregate amounts. It does say it can. If 
you see here it has an aggregator of none. In this case, I was just seeing if it could literally classify the subject of the query. So what category type is a fee? So like what what is the classification of a fee? And it did get that correct. So I'd be interested to see if it could like aggregate um, what's the average fee amount or what's the average, what's the total sum, what's the sum total of the expense category, right, in, on, in the table and see if it could actually do questions like that. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a quick little video and I think, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.